Hey everybody, it's uh, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich. Uh, we've got some helpers today. They're off camera. You'll see them in a minute. My son, Kyler, and my daughter, Kinley. Today's topic is going to be great for kids, but I think it's also going to be amazing for adults because it's probably the most misunderstood thing in meteorology, dew point. Uh, I get people to ask me all the time. They think humidity is a better way to measure how they feel, but dew point is actually a more accurate way to measure how much moisture is in the atmosphere. So this diagram I have over to my left on camera here um, to you on its right screen shows the difference between humidity and dew point. Humidity is considered relative humidity. It's relative to the air temperature. So it literally changes as the temperature changes. Dew point is a pretty much a constant. It's a temperature. So if the dew point today was 35 and it stays 35 all day, as the temperature goes up and down, it changes the relative humidity. So the way I like to describe this is we have two glasses there. One is 50% full. That's the relative humidity. It's 50% full for its relative size, but there's six ounces of water in there. The cup to the right is 100% full, but it's only holding four ounces of water. So dew point is the amount of water that's in the cup whereas the humidity is what percent of the cup is full. So I'm gonna bring the full screen here in a second, but I'll show this graphic a little more clearly so you can see it. Um, dew point is one of those things that really gives you a better feel for what it feels like outside. Now, relative humidity is useful. It's useful for how quickly paint dries, how quickly water evaporates, how fire danger, but for comfort, like how muggy it is, dew point is always more accurate way to measure things. And in fact, here's a look at our dew point forecast for the next seven days. Notice once we get to about 60 is when we start to feel it kind of muggy right now. And to put this in another perspective, this morning it got down to 36 degrees, but the relative humidity was 81%. No one would ever think that this morning it was muggy, right? Because it was so cold out. That's because the dew point was 32. It was really, really low. So I have a great demonstration here on the table. Um, and you can see there's there's Kyler, Kinley's gonna be over here. Here's my two uh, Pyrex measuring cups. So we have this all the way full. So this is 100% full, this is 100% full. So if this was relative humidity, these both would be 100%. But here's the thing, this only has how many cups, Kyler? One. One, and how many cups does this have, Kinley? Four. So the dew point in here is four, the dew point here is one. So even though they're 100% full, they're actually much more water in here. So just think about this in the summer, when the dew point gets above 60, we feel kind of muggy. When it gets above 70, ugh, that's a sauna. And a day like today, where the dew point is in the 30s, it feels completely comfortable. So another experiment I do to talk about dew point and frost point, I'm gonna move the water out of the way here. Move that over here. This is a really cool experiment we could do. And Tyler, I need you to go get me some ice. So what you need to do for this experiment is you need two cans. Um, luckily, we have a ton of cans right now because we have a lot of canned goods. But um, condensed milk cans work great. This is, I think, our bean or pea cans. Um, not like pecans, pea can uh, that peas go into. <laughs> um, we actually are going to do a couple experiments here. We're going to take some ice and we're gonna fill this about half full, thank you, Kyler, with our crushed ice. So we've got crushed ice in here. We're gonna fill it about halfway full, okay? So it's about halfway full, you can see. We're gonna take this one and fill it about halfway full. And we're gonna do a pretty cool little experiment. So they're both about half full of crushed ice. Thank you, Kinley. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take table salt, which is the chemical composition is sodium chloride, um, simple table salt, and we're gonna dump it in here and if you've ever made homemade ice cream, you know what's gonna happen here. Salt lowers the freezing point of water. This is why we put salt on the roads in the winter to melt them. So actually, the more salt you had, the lower the freezing point. You can actually make the freezing point drop to like 25, 24 degrees instead of 32 degrees. So we're gonna take some salt, we're gonna dump it in here, and the more the better, because you want this to get really, really cold. And what I'm gonna do, I dumped about three big scoops in there. I'm gonna stir it up a little bit. We'll let it kind of mix up. We'll let it sit there. And we're going to let it sit for about 30 seconds. So we'll take that out. I'm going to take just regular ice and we're just going to take water. So I'll use some of the water from our measuring cup here. And I'm going to fill it up till it's about to the level of the water. And what we're going to do, I'm going to let this sit here. We're going to wait maybe 30 seconds or so. And what's going to happen is there is moisture in our house right now. Not a ton because it's pretty dry today. We told you the dew point's in the 30s. 
but there's water molecules in the air right now. We can't see them because they're so tiny and spread out that we don't see them. But if we were to squish them all together or condense them, we would see them. So what's going to happen as this gets colder and colder, and it will. In fact, I'm going to try to use my, my thermometer. I've got my thermometer here. I'm going to aim this in here. And so this one says 32.5. This one I put salt in, remember. Look at the temperature in there. It's 11 degrees below zero. So I've actually made it so cold in there that it's getting colder than the freezing point. So salt is actually lowering the temperature in there through a chemical reaction. And if we watch closely, the reason we're waiting is you can see we've actually lowered the temperature in here to the frost point. We're actually creating frost. Some of this happened today. Um, Kyler, feel that. Can you feel the frost? Peel it with your... Yeah, so he actually scratched the side. So there's actually ice forming on here. Now this one is getting cold. It's not super mugging here, but there's not ice forming on here because it's lowering it to the dew point. So another way to think of the dew point and frost point, it's the temperature at which if you lower the air temperature to, you get dew to form. And when it's below freezing, we call that the frost point. Here's another cool thing about the dew point. The air temperature can never drop below the dew point. So you want to know a cool trick we have for forecasting overnight lows? If I know we're going to have clear skies, calm winds and dry air in place and the dew point is 32 i could forecast a low temperature of 32 because i know that's the lowest that the air temperature can get so we've had this gone for about 30 seconds now maybe i'll add a little bit more salt in here <laughs> god there's like that's awesome we'll add some more in there shake it up god there feel oh look at that again i'll bring it up to the camera that's actual ice forming on the can now, if I, I show you this can, there is some condensation forming, but it's liquid water. So we have lowered this to the dew point temperature, um, and we've lowered this to the frost point temperature, which is actually scratch it again. Isn't that pretty cool? Can Leon feel that? So ask your parents if you've ever tried to make homemade ice cream. I know you guys did this in school, right? It's pretty cool. The reason you add rock salt to the ice is you actually lower the temperature below freezing and it creates really cold conditions. So if you wanna get something really cold, and let's take the temperature one more time. We'll do just the liquid water. Okay, it's down to 29.3, probably because I'm aiming at the ice. I'll put this one back in here and look how much colder that is. So actually through the use of salt, you can lower the freezing point of water, which is pretty cool. And we created the frost point and the dew point. So from now on, when you ever think about how muggy it is outside, don't think of the relative humidity because it doesn't tell you a lot. The relative humidity is always near 100% in the morning because the air temperature drops to the dew point. And then in the afternoon, as the temperature goes up, the distance between the dew point and air temperature get wider, the humidity goes down. So even in the hottest, muggiest days of summer, when it's 90 degrees outside and our dew point is 70, it feels super muggy outside, but guess what? The relative humidity is like in the 50% range. And in Antarctica right now, where it's super cold, it could be 30 below zero. And the dew point could be negative 30 as well. And guess what the relative humidity is? 100%. So don't look at relative humidity if you're thinking about how comfortable it is outside. Look at the dew point. And that's why I'm a big fan of the dew point temperature. Hope you enjoyed today's um, quick little demonstration on dew point and relative humidity and now i want to go make ice cream i think we should <laughs> we should probably try to make some homemade ice cream which is a cool experiment in and of itself but that's why we put salt on the roads it actually lowers the freezing point of water if you ever wonder salt water ocean water actually doesn't freeze at 32 degrees because of that it has salt in it, it takes about 28 29 sometimes lower uh, for it to freeze in fact in the arctic that water sometimes looks really oily because it's below the freezing Point. And that's why sometimes ice forms on ships as soon as they go through it. So just some cool facts about the dew point and the frost point. Something to keep in mind when you're thinking about the summer heat and humidity, which is just around the corner. Again, remember, every day at 1 o'clock, we'll be doing our weather school. Thank you, guys. You guys were so entertaining. Uh, <laughs> before we go on camera, you guys are all like, ah, and they're crazy. And now they're like all calm because they know they're on camera. But they've enjoyed these. Um, I like your guys' help because it's cool. <laughs> You little stinker. Give me some hands-on experience um, in doing some of these weather experiments. And if you have anything we, you want us to do, oh, one thing before I go, Kyler, grab our plants. Because remember last week we did the gardening segment and we told you to do um, hang the bean plant. You want to do yours, Kenley? Just be careful. 
peel it off. I want to show you the progress that we've had so far. So here's Kyler's. You can actually see the root has formed in there. Pretty cool. And here's Kinley's. Kinley's looks really cool. Though she didn't curl up. She has a little mold up there. That was always something I was worried about. But you can see right there, look at all the roots that have formed. So um, if you're on Twitter or Facebook, I'd love to see how yours are progressing. I know Trey Maggio, one of our um, promotions guys, did the same thing. He hung it in his window. But this is uh, only, what, six days? Because we did, oh, Kyler's got a big root. Look at his. It's stretching out across the yeah, bottom. His, I don't know if you can see that. Grew before mine. So pretty cool. So this was last week's experiment we did on gardening. Um, and hey, and just FYI, gardeners, one more frost possible tonight. So you might want to take precautions for one more night. If you can get through tonight frost-free without any damage to your plants, we should be good for the rest of the spring season, right? Mm -hmm. Our tower garden's okay because it's got water running through it. So thanks again, everybody, for tuning in again tomorrow, 1 o'clock. Chris Mulcahy is going to have to. Don't point that at people's face. It's got a laser on it. You don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> tomorrow at 1 o'clock, Chris Mulcahy will have our weather school for Friday. Um, join us tomorrow. We'll be doing this again. And thanks again for tuning in. Remember, go to our, our WCNC YouTube channel. You can get all the past episodes. This one will be recorded there as well. And you can see them. We also, we also have a uh, section on our website, wcnc.com slash weatherschool. Thanks for joining us.